Hello, so today I've got a versus for you, and today I'm going to be comparing the Ordinary Buffet, longtime favorite, to the new Q&A Peptide Facial Serum, which is a newer brand. Uh, certainly worth checking out, kind of similar to the Ordinary in a lot of ways. And uh, anyway, let me just say real quick, I purchase all these products with my own money. I'll never waste your time with sponsored ads or videos. So if you want to help support the channel, check out nobsbeauty.com, check out my Patreon community, or click on the Amazon link below. Okay, so both of these are peptide serums, and peptides are great for your skin for many reasons. Anti-aging helps hydrate the skin, and certainly worth adding into your routine. So let me just get right on to the first criteria, which is packaging. Obviously, they both use dropper bottles, uh, Dropper bottles are annoying to me, especially the Ordinary because they're so impossible to find one from the other. Uh, but overall, I do like the fact that Q&A uses a opaque bottle. I guess the Ordinary uses a frosted bottle. I'm not exactly sure how much light gets through a frosted bottle. Anybody know anything about it? I'm not quite sure. Although if I had to pick one just for protecting the ingredients, I'd probably go with the, the darker bottle. But overall, I just call that a tie for dropper bottles around the world. Okay. In terms of alcohol, neither of these products contain any denatured or drying types of alcohol. So that's always very good for dry sensitive skin or anyone concerned with free radicals. Avoiding high amounts of denatured alcohol is just a good practice. So I gave them a tie for that. In terms of fragrance, both of these products are fragrance free and have no real noticeable scent. So no issues with that. Another tie. Manufacturing location. The Ordinary is made in Canada. Well, Q&A is made in England, but another tie because I really don't have any preference one place over the other. Then in terms of ease of use. So the Ordinary applies very easily after cleansing, toning, and essences. I'd apply it before other thicker moisturizing creams. Uh, if you use the buffet as the last product in your routine, it has a tendency to dry to kind of a tacky feeling. So because of that, that's why I always recommend not having this be the very last product. Apply a good moisturizer at the end, and then you won't notice that tackiness, which some people really dislike. Um, yeah, so layers with other products. No real other issues with using it. Very easy. Then in terms of the Q&A, this one has a slightly thicker texture. Let me just give you an example. Although the Ordinary can have a slightly thicker texture to it. Um, let's see. So let me open this one up. This one, I would say the Q&A product is more geared towards those with oilier or drier skin. Just because it seems to be uh, thick, but it also does a good job covering all of your skin. Uh, while the Ordinary kind of dries with a tacky finish. Um, the Q&A seems to layer pretty well with most things, although it can pill if you use it in a routine with a lot of other layers, which I should know about because I use so many ridiculous layers, it's out of control. Um, so keep that one in mind. As long as you don't apply a lot of other layers, you won't notice the problems with the pilling. Um, and those with oilier skin might be able to get away with just using the Q&A peptide serum alone without other products because it is hydrating enough. So uh, for ease of use, both are very easy to use. No real issues except for the slight pilling with Q&A and the slight tackiness of the Ordinary. Neither is perfect, but overall pretty easy to use. Okay, in terms of beneficial ingredients, the exciting fun stuff, uh, the Ordinary, with the exception of the first two ingredients and the last few ingredients, every single ingredient in the buffet has a purpose and is directly beneficial to the skin. We've got probiotics, 11 different amino acids, hyaluronic acids, uh, technology, Matrixyl 3000 peptide complex, then the Matrixyl Synth 6 peptide complex. Uh, we've got a lot of different peptide complexes. Then we've got Argalox peptide complex, which a lot of those are um, trademark peptide complexes. But the Ordinary does a very good job of including lots of those as well as other hydrating ingredients. So for the most part, every single ingredient has a direct purpose, which is nice to see. 
instead of just loading up with slip ingredients and things that don't have a direct total benefit. That's nice to see. Um, the Q&A, so with this one, the very first six or eight ingredients of the Q&A are just slip hydrate ingredients. There's no peptides in the first eight ingredients, just glycerin and things like that. There's nothing wrong with those, but they really just don't provide a lot of oomph or antioxidant capabilities. They really just hydrate skin. After that, we've got honeysuckle extract, which is a source of flavonoids and also has anti-inflammatory benefits, especially for those that have rosacea or eczema. Uh, flavonoids and saponins are great ingredients for skin because they contain antioxidants and also help protect the skin from free radical damage. Uh, and anti honeysuckle also has antibacterial properties. For peptides, we've got tripeptide 29. That is the only peptide in the serum. I don't know why it's called a peptide serum when it's only got one. Kind of a bummer. So after that, then we've got sodium hyaluronate, uh, sodium ascorbyl phosphate, which is a stable water so soluble form of vitamin C. Then we've got magnesium and lactic acid. So if you're looking at which one does more for your skin, hands down the buffet, it's got much more beneficial ingredients, many more peptides, and it's a real peptide serum, well as this one. I'm not even sure this should really be called a peptide serum when it's only got one. It could just be called a water serum. Water's in there. Or honeysuckle serum. So a little bit disappointing. Okay, in terms of acneogenic ingredients, the ordinary contains a few uh, butylene glycol, polysorbate 20, and hydrogenated castor oil. The Q&A is fungal acne safe and has no other ingredients of issue for acne prone skin. So for acneogenic ingredients, the Q&A gets to the point. Then we get to performance. The ordinary doesn't give an instant effect noticeable effect on skin. So you can't just use it and tomorrow say, oh my gosh, my skin looks different. Peptides don't really have an instant effect on skin. Um, although when you get towards the end of your very first bottle of the buffet, then I think you can kind of start to notice some results, some decrease in fine lines, improved hydration, but it's just nothing where you can use it once and immediately notice a difference. Um, same with the Q&A, uh, you can use it and notice an increase in hydration, but no other real noticeable benefits. In my opinion, this is probably better used as a moisturizing serum as opposed to a peptide serum just because it doesn't have a lot of peptides. So overall for performance, I give that point to the ordinary pretty easily. Uh, then in terms of price, so the Ordinary, these are both one ounce bottles. The Ordinary sells for $14.80 and the Q&A sells for $12. So they're pretty close in price for the most part. The Q&A is just very, very slightly more affordable, but not by much. Then in terms of the it factor and the deciding category, the Ordinary has an exceptional formula, lots of peptides, very affordable, a definite winner for most skin types. The Q&A has a bit silkier texture, decent for acne prone skin, contains some nice hydrating ingredients, but just can't compare to the ordinary, especially if you're really looking for a true peptide serum. Q&A does contain Japanese honeysuckle, which some people prefer to avoid because it's a potential uh, classification as a paraben. Japanese honeysuckle is an ingredient used as a preservative and opinions on its safety are all over the place. Some people love it. Some people find using Japanese honeysuckle a bit deceptive as a preservative. It's all over the place. And you make your own decisions on that. I'm not going to tell you what to think. Everyone has their own opinions on things. But overall, for the it factor, the ordinary are just hands down. If they were trying to copy it, there's so many different things that they could have done to make this so much better. And this one's the old original, and it's still one of the best out there. So... Overall, The Ordinary has nine points, Well, the Q&A product has eight. So, although in my opinion, it's not even really a close call. Hands down, The Ordinary is better for many different reasons. 
So anyway, I'm interested in hearing from you guys if you've had a chance to try either of these or if you tried both of them, what your thoughts are on them. Uh, so certainly leave a comment. I love hearing from you guys. And stay tuned for more tomorrow. Thank you guys so much.